Hey, community builders and joy igniters. It's the party scientist. Today, I want to talk about death and how we can use death to improve the quality of our gatherings, but also our human connections. Death has been on my mind for the last year, especially, and I've been hosting more and more events about death. Really what catalyzed my exploration of death was Sam Harris's last time recording in his waking up app. And his hypothesis, his his thesis in this four minute recording is that when we're experiencing something for the last time, we're likely not aware that it's the last time. We're not even aware of the consideration that it might be the last time. So I'm going to give you five ways that you can use death to improve your relationships and also ways that you can use this in the gatherings you host, in the meetings you run to increase the presence and increase the meaningfulness of the gathering. Okay. So this is the article I published. It's called Death as a Gateway to Life. So my argument here is when we reflect on death, we access more life. We access more vitality. So I hosted this gathering and it was an all-you-can-eat death lunch. Okay, Hosted this all-you-can-eat death lunch. And what I discovered is having an event about death creates really meaningful connections. So that's really number one, is hosting some sort of mortality discussion so that you can start to think about death and prepare for it, okay? So I hosted this gathering. Everyone shared, you know, what they wanted to share if it were their last moment. And some people talked about gratitude. Others talked about Um, the importance of loving and being loved. One person just shared a sentence. Have you loved? Have you been loved? Have you allowed yourself to be loved? That was one thing one person said. The one other person said, they mentioned the five regrets of people on their deathbed. One of which is, I wish I kept in touch with friends. Another one is, I wish I created a life by my own accord not the life that others told me to live. So I want to go through the four others. So I've talked about hosting a mortality themed discussion for your community, but let's talk about one-on-one. So one-on-one, I found that whenever I look people in the eyes, I remind myself of their mortality. If I'm looking in their eyes and they're super upset and they're yelling at me and they're hating on me, If I acknowledge their mortality, it's going to change my response to their behavior. I'm going to become more forgiving and more present. Okay. So number one is eye contact equals acknowledgement of mortality. Two, when you're opening and gathering, you can use the phrase, this phrase right here. This is the last time we'll be sharing this moment in precisely this way. There is a last time we will see each other too. So I share this. I I, I also say that there's a last time that I'm going to see you. There's a last time that we're going to see each other. Just bringing in that intemperance helps people become more present, put down their phone, and just put down the bullshit, the complaining, and nourish each other. Okay. So number two is the last time phrase. You can open up your gathering with these phrases around the last time. Number three, we talked about hosting a death event. My prompt for my death event was what do you want to share with your friends and loved ones before you die? Number four for community building, host your celebration of life, invite your community. And uh, I haven't done this yet, but I'm doing it this summer. I want all the people that I love in my life, we're going to take over a summer camp and we're going to celebrate like I'm going to (laughs) die. It's going to be an experiment, but hey, I want to be at my celebration of life. Number five, 
prepare for death. Now, when we're fully prepared for death, we can live more fully. We can take more risks and we can uh, be more vulnerable, right? If we're afraid of death, we're fear-driven and we don't take as many risks. My philosophy is the more social risks you take, the more nourishing your relationships will be and your social life will be more vibrant. So how do we prepare for death? There's two ways to think of this. Logistics, writing your will, documenting instructions, passcodes, and explaining what you want your loved ones to do with your body. Number two is emotions. How do we emotionally feel prepared to die? So two things have really helped me emotionally prepare for to death. Okay. First one is uh, realizing that there's death is coming and you're never going to know when it's coming. It's completely out of your control. So I'm not going to, you know, think I'm holier than thou. And, and, you know, I'm not going to be able to cheat death. It's I'm going to get hit by a car. My plane's going to go down. I have accepted the unpredictability of life. Life is unpredictable. Death is coming. It's going to hit you when you least expect it. And it's coming and it's going to happen. So uh, radical acceptance of this unpredictability of life prepares me for death. Number two is non-duality and it's related to number one. Okay. So non-duality is about the absence of self entirely, meaning there's no one deciding, there's no one choosing, there's no one thinking. This is another practice that Sam Harris talks about. When we embrace non-duality, we realize that um, essentially when events unfold, there's no self uh, there. There's just conscious information emerging as it happens. There's no one changing how consciousness arises. So essentially, when we embrace the non-dual perspective, we, uh, we can radically accept how events unfold. And we can also realize that um, when we die, just the, the, the sensory input of consciousness is just going to change. But like, there's, there's no real self that's dying in the first place. Like, the, you get me. It's kind of complicated. But check out Sam Harris, non-duality. It's been super instructive. All right. My final recommendation for you as a community builder, live every gathering and social interaction like it's the last time. Keep this in the back of your head and bring it to the forefront of your guests' minds. That was my article, Death is My Gateway to Life. Let me know what you thought about it.